Welcome to Flipping Dreams Podcast with your host, Heather Renee May. Each week, we bring you interviews and resources that will inspire you and encourage you. It's never too late to transform your past and empower your future. You are listening to Flipping Dreams. Hi. Hey, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You I'm didn't good. let me preview what I look like first. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where am I? <laughs> oh, no. Yes, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I can always raise it up, too. I'm in the closet. That's where I record. So I like that. I'm in my trailer, which could be a closet. Some people's closets <laughs> aren't the size. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, it is so nice to meet you. And tell me how to pronounce your last name. Glogovac. Glogovac. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, yes, Michelle. So, um, I mean, we're just going to kick right in, right? Like, okay, yeah. You know, why wait? Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you about my simplified life, your collective, your podcast, all the things. Also, I'd like to hear just a little bit about how you went from an aviation executive to doing all this. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about, about that. But um, as I had shared with you, this season of Flipping Dreams is all about helping people flip big dreams. And one of those dreams for people is to write and publish a book. So um, I've been interviewing authors and sharing advice and tips. And I would love to get your advice on podcast tours and how to successfully do this this time of COVID pandemic. How do we how do we sell our books? How do we get out there? So um, yeah, perfect. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. podcast is definitely the way and I, you know, I read a stat the other day that something like over 80% of Americans want to write a book, but maybe 3% do. Wow. Yeah, it was something that, that incredible. Low. That's really yeah. that's surprising. It's definitely wow. on my list of someday. <laughs> and that's just it. It's always a someday thing. Um, yeah. So I figured I'd, I'd bring the someday to today. <laughs> I like it. I fully encourage people. I mean, even if you, you know, I'm trying to encourage people, whether it's a book or a journal or whatever, just get writing because, uh, you know, if you want to write, you write. It's like that voice inside you that you just, you just need to do it. And to me, it's almost like podcasts, you know, they're so, and podcasts are even easier than writing a book, you know, because you don't have to find a publisher or self-publish, but you can just record from a trailer from your closet. You know, it really doesn't matter and just get your voice out there for, you know, re relatively nothing for a cost. So that's yes. why I think podcasts are just, they're life changing in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been really excited to get into this because I have a background in media and, um, you know, blogs are one thing, but, um, I, I just love hearing. I love the audio aspect. I think also like when I was younger, I used to pretend like I was like a radio DJ and I'd like you be, t <laughs> you know, or, or telling the news on the radio. I don't know. So maybe it goes. I wanted to, to be too. Katie Couric. Even oh, well, in college, I thought I would be Katie Couric. <laughs> oh. Well, you still have time. <laughs> I know I do. Yeah. Well, now I'm like, well, I'm just going to be Kamala. I'm going to be the vice president next. <laughs> there you go. Or, or at least, you know, interview them. <laughs> that would be a dream. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. So tell me a little bit about, let's start with like your journey and then we'll get into what you do now. And cause a lot of what we're both doing is very aligned and, um, and then we can kind of dig into focusing on just the aspect of PR for books. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I always thought I was going to be an attorney. I carried a briefcase at the age of five. I selected my college because it gave you an undergrad they had the option of law as an undergrad so i was like that's it that's what i'm gonna do and while i was in college my first year i needed a part-time job because i needed some money and i could walk to the airport on the corporate side and they were hiring for nine dollars and 20 cents an hour and i went yes this is fantastic and so began my career in aviation for almost two decades oh my gosh is that not funny and, you know, it was fun, um, especially when I was on that side of things. I worked at the corporate terminal. So and it was in Santa Barbara. So we I had gonna stars. Ask. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was some awesome people, you know, I have gotten to meet and talk to and, you know, you can't be starstruck and 
at the same time, you're like, oh my gosh, gosh. pinch myself. You know, did I just meet Michael Jackson? Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know, did so I just cool. put blanket on the plane? Yes, I did. You know, it was, it was big, awesome stuff. And it just continued that, you know, as I stayed on, you get promoted, you get a salary, you get benefits. And as all of my friends are moving home, I was like, I don't want to be that one. I don't want to go home no, 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 I will just stay where I am and I have a job. And so I just continued on in aviation and I worked for two fortune 100 companies that were the top in corporate aviation. And then I got married and I had babies. <laughs> so wow. yes, yeah, it was a lot of traveling. My husband's also in corporate aviation. So at one point we were taking two kids who are 12 months and three weeks apart, a nanny with us, you know, the pack and plays, the diaper bags, and it just wasn't fun and glamorous and exciting, even though travel really isn't when you're on the corporate side. I, I think that's something um, I toured with a band and people think it's very exciting, but after a while, La Quintas are all just La Quintas and it's really <laughs> not that exciting. <laughs> it's the truth yeah the only i'd get excited like an embassy suites because then you got happy hour for free <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and then throw two kids into the mix and it's really not fun it just isn't you're working all yeah. day to get back to the hotel and care for two kids and it was costing money to travel like that so i was laid off in april of 2018 and okay. i said you know what is it that i can do that I can stay at home with the kids, not have a nanny, you know, actually be present. And I dabbled and I pivoted a bunch of times like most. And I did some event planning because I was used to networking events. I did some social media because I had already started a blog focused on wine reviews because I like to drink wine. I'm like, that's easy, free wine, write about it. No brainer. Nice. Um, and it really wasn't until September of 2018 that I listened to my first podcast. I didn't, I had an iPhone still do, did not know that the purple button would allow me to listen to a podcast. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh my God. So this is less than three years ago. And the first podcast I was listening to was a life and business coach who said, we all have a passion. We have a purpose, you know, go find it. And I was like, yes, this is amazing. I have no idea what mine is, but this woman's onto something. And she actually reached out to me and said, I noticed that you are loving what I'm putting out there. Do you want to start pitching me? And so I started pitching her to be on other podcasts and be interviewed. And then that kind of snowballed to working on her podcast and, uh, you know, do, doing all the things within podcasting. Um, and then as I continued down the podcast pitching avenue, you know, it became where clients said, well, what else can you do for us? If you can land us on this podcast, can you land us in this media outlet? And it just blossomed from there. Uh, I think that one of the big reasons though, is because everything's relationship based. Having come yes. from the media, you know that. So totally Me building relationships with podcast hosts with clients you know engaging on twitter and just being a present engaged person has made me successful in having such a career change and i think that's something that's really hard for a lot of artists or writers or anyone in the creative space is um, being good at marketing and creative activities because i feel like um a lot of people that I run into, they're like, I, I just can't do that. I can't be, you know, out there. I can't be, I don't want to sell myself. I just want to create the thing. And I think that nowadays um, in every space, whether it's music or uh, books, uh, publishing, um, even if you're trying to get a traditional publishing contract, you have to prove that you have a huge following, that you have, you know what you're doing marketing wise, you have a PR plan, all of those things. And so I think we're all having to, we're having to learn how to wear those hats when we haven't mm -hmm. before and and I mean you know we're really it's think about like when you first start listening to podcasts to now I mean the technology has dramatically changed and made it accessible to everyone so well and that's funny because you know in the beginning of COVID you had people like Howard Stern who records in a studio and he had to start recording from home and it sounded horrible <gasps> Oh, it, it was, it went from yeah. great to horrific because people didn't know that all you really need is a simple setup, but they weren't thinking, oh, I do need something more than just 
a microphone just in the a middle microphone. of the kitchen or something. So yeah, I mean, it definitely, uh, it is accessible for everyone, but it does take some research. It does take some skill. It takes equipment. Um, it takes time. And time. And, yeah. you know, if you're lucky enough, like, I mean, I have a background in film editing and stuff, so I do all of it myself. But now there are companies you can, you know, farm that out to, but it costs. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's just a matter of why you're doing it and what kind of budget you have and all the things. But this is, I think this is the new space that we're all like, you know, everyone yeah. is jumping Definitely. into. So, yeah. Between this and YouTube, which is why I also do, I post the video on YouTube as mm -hmm. well to cross. But, um, but yeah. So, okay. So yes, networking, it is all about personal relationships and connections. Um, so I guess, tell me about how that's played a part in, um, like you developing your own podcast, your own brand and like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I think that a big part of it too is not being afraid to just ask, you know, whether that's in my job or in my podcast, I see quite a few people go, oh, well, how did you get, you know, a big name or what do I do if I want someone, you know, on my show is bigger than me? You just ask. It's mm -hmm. truly as simple as that. You know, you ask and I have not, I, nobody said no to me at least, you know, when I've said, I want to interview you and this is why people are happy to. So, you, you know, I think yeah. that's a big part of it is, is really just getting comfortable with putting yourself out there. And, you know, if you're rejected, who cares, move on to the next person, you know, when it comes to this, um, I, I think that's been the biggest part for me and just, you know, creating content and being consistent with it. It, allows the audience to know, oh, it's coming out. I remember there was one week in the beginning, I was slammed with client work that I'm like, I'll just skip an episode. And I actually had people messaging me going, where's this week's episode? Mm. And I went, oh, you're all listening. I had no idea that you were actually anticipating this every week. So I think consistency is just a big deal. And, you know, putting out good content for me, I put out what I want to hear. Yeah. So that, that way I'm not bored. And if mm -hmm. you like me and we would get along, then you're going to enjoy what I'm putting out there as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think for me, like last year was my, um, I started my podcast, um, kind of after the pandemic had hit, I had done a, an online, I created an online course. And then I decided, woke up in the middle at like 4am with podcasts, you need to do a podcast. And I was like, what? I don't even know it. So I'm like lying in bed, you know, Googling how to do a podcast. And by nine o'clock that morning, I had my artwork done. And by the end of the week, my first episode was out. <laughs> Action taker. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I jump before I think about what I just did. And so, <laughs> and so it was a weekly thing and it was um, a lot. Um, I was lucky enough to get an intern and that really helped um, for social media. But, um, it was a lot. And I think near the end with working full time and doing this, it was like, I just got really burned out. And I also, as I was having these conversations with people living their dreams or how they flipped their dreams, I was like, I haven't yet done that. I mean, I have, I've had many dreams, but I haven't, I was like, what is my next? Like, I, I was still kind of searching for what I needed to be doing because I knew the podcast was just an outpour. It was an outflow. It wasn't it. That wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. Um, right. and so, um, that's when I took a sabbatical. So I did take a break, but I let my listeners know, um, and gratefully they're still there. However, many of them. <laughs> and, and in the meantime, I wrote my book, my first novel, which by the way, is set in the Texas wine trail. So you will really like it. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 So I spent three months in Texas, um, doing research. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Oh, that's genius. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. The Sonoma of the South. It's and there's like 40 plus wineries on, you know, in driving distance that you're just yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, so that yeah. sounds amazing. I can't wait to read it and drink along with it. Yeah. You need to yeah. have like a pairing guide or, you know, access to the wines as you read. I've thought about things. I have 
things. I have things planned in the future. But it is a fiction. It's a romance fiction. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to give too much away. I but, like it. I like yeah. it. There was a book I read many, many years ago that it was something about Mr. Wonderful where she did cooking while she was falling in love with this guy. And then every so often there's a recipe. Mm, and yes. so I actually took it and I would cook from it and it was good. It Use was the recipe. But it, yes. yeah, it kept me very involved. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go back to this. I still have it because I refer to the recipes. I have a few books like that. Yeah. That I really, and I'm like, oh, wait, what is that recipe? And I'll dig it out. Yeah. 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 There's something to that crossover too. And like being applicable in more than one level, like useful yeah. and more like a, more of a resource than just a one-time read. So, oh, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. You'll have to keep me posted on that. I will. I want to read I will. it. Yeah. I will. Right now, I hired a New York editor um, and she is editing. So I have to, like, you know, keep myself busy waiting <laughs> until <laughs> end of February, I think I'll get it. So, um, and then I'll be excited to, um, yeah, Plan get it your all book tour. tweaked. And then, yes, yes. And then hopefully, you know, figure out the publishing. So, you know, this is kind of part of my idea too, is I'm just taking everyone along with me. I mean, as I'm asking you these questions, I'm also taking notes and like, oh, you know, getting tips. So, yep. but I get to share that with everyone because um, hopefully this will be a resource, whether someone's ready to write now or they want like, you know, five years down the road, they're like, oh, wait, I remember there was a whole season about the steps to do this. And let me go back to that. Or even if they've written a book. Um, so I had a, I actually collaborated with another PR um, agency on this one where an author came to them. She'd worked for a publishing house and they, you know, publishing houses will come with their own marketing plan and they will pitch you. And she was pitched a podcast. And when we were presented with the list of who she was pitched to, it had nothing to do with her book. Absolutely yeah. nothing. And I find that there's a lack in publishing companies of having someone who is specific for podcasts. And I see that is going to be something that's going to change. I think we're going to see someone who's more dedicated and well-versed in the podcasting industry to make better connections and not just go, oh, here's a podcast out of the sky. Let's pitch you to them. Because right. that's one of the biggest things is to find that right fit. You know, you, you, the whole goal is to speak to the audience that's going to want to hear from you, your expertise, who's going to buy your book. And it, it's in figuring out who that audience is to make sure that, that it's worth your while, it's worth worth the host's while, you know, that that's one of the big key things. And last year with the pandemic and everything shutting down, you weren't going to book launches and bookstores, you know, you weren't seeing people traveling and being on stages and that was it. I mean, I watched uh, Michelle Obama's book tour on Netflix, right? So, <laughs> you know, yes. lucky for her, she got that and, and it was taped, but otherwise, you know, we're not seeing Barack Obama on tour with his new book because we can't, we're, we're not. Yeah. And so more and more people are relying on podcasts because you're in the ear of those who are going to read your book. It's accessible by everybody because they're free to listen to. Um, and you can reach the masses. And then on top of that, what I love about podcasts too, is it's not just on one platform, but if the podcast host is like, you're putting it on YouTube, now you're reaching another audience. If you've got show notes, it's on your website, you know, it becomes evergreen content that is everywhere. It can be on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can post something on Clubhouse, you know, have a conversation there. So there's so many different platforms. What were you going to say? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, um, my last, last, this week's guest um, that is coming out that's, anyway, said something about Clubhouse and I was like, what the heck is Clubhouse? I haven't even heard of this. It's the newest platform. It actually came out last year, but it's only catching on right now. It is an app that is only available for iPhone users. It's invite only. So I have to have your cell phone number to send you an invite. And I only get so many invitations and it's an audio only platform. So I compare it to a TED talk where you're giving your TED talk, but you can pull people out from the audience to come on stage with you. And then you can put them back in the audience. 
Oh, interesting. So okay. you have you have rooms and you create a room and then you go on and you start talking about whatever it is you want, but you can bring people. So I've people have asked, you know, will this take over podcasting? And I don't think it will because it's a one and done. There's nothing that's recorded. Oh, that's too bad. You, yeah. You could do um, like a hot seat type of thing if you wanted to, where you have a panel of people or say you're a coach and you want to have people come up and give them coaching sessions. And I've actually sat in on some of those, you know, nothing says you can't record it. You have to tell everyone you're recording that in the title of your room, but it's another something else that you could do and then repurpose into a podcast episode. Um, so different kinds of things you can do. It can be overwhelming because there's so many, you know, platforms these days. And where do you there have to are. be? And I did see yeah. that. I think your latest podcast episode talks about this. It's on Clubhouse. That's right. Okay, okay good. <laughs> yeah. So if listeners want, um, go to My Simplified Life. And yes. the latest podcast episode number 68 Good. is okay. on um, how to use Clubhouse for your business with influencer Jenny Melrose. Cool. cool. Yes. Very cool. Okay. Let's go back to podcasts and let's talk about, so you're talking about like publishers who have a person that's supposed to like come up with this list, this curated mm -hmm. list of media outlets or media, you know, for the yeah. author. Um well, okay, for those of us who are going to self or co-publish, we might not have that access. We might be doing that ourselves. So mm -hmm. what steps do we take to figure out, A, what platforms are right for us, but also just to find the right podcast? If we're just talking about podcasts, like how do how would we set up a tour? What would take me per, take me on this journey, this podcast? I will, I will onboard you. Yes, <laughs> please do. So first, we're going to look at who your ideal audience is for your book. You know, are you talking to men? Are you talking to women? Are you talking to both? What's their age range? We really want to get down to basically your ideal client avatar like you do in business, but for your reader. Who is your book really going to appeal to? Mm -hmm. And then from there, where are these people? You know, what kind of podcasts are they listening to? So it's going to vary depending on what your book is about. Um you know, you've got wine involved in yours, right? So you could start looking up. Um, I use Apple Podcasts to research, but I also use, this is, this is my big secret. I use Instagram hashtags to search podcasts. Oh. Because when you search keywords on Apple, you'll get more of the, the bigger ones. You're not going to find the smaller ones. And when you think about being a guest on podcasts, you need to remember it's not all about the numbers. It's about reaching your ideal audience. So you could be on Brene Brown's and reach a million people, but none of them want to learn about wine. They want all self-development or self-help type things. So you want to find the people, find out where they are. And even if they are small, you know, that's fine because now you're reaching your target audience. So, so now the hashtags, okay, so would you put a hashtag in for like, like hashtag podcast, hashtag wine, hashtag like hashtag what? wine podcast, hashtag um, wine lovers, hashtag um, podcast for women. There's literally a hashtag for all of it. And I will just start playing and looking and then scrolling through the posts as to, is this really a podcast? What do these people do? And if it looks like one that's good, then I'll take it over to Apple Podcasts to look it up. Do they take guests? That's going to be a big one. Is this a solo show or do they take guests? So you want to make sure they take guests. Is it a recent podcast? Because Apple does not throw anyone away. Everyone and their mother is there, even if they're, you know, five years old and don't yeah. publish anything. So yeah. making sure that they're relevant, they take guests, those are going to be your top things. And then to find the contact information, you can Google them to go look for a website. But if you're already on their Instagram, see what kind of contact information they have there because oftentimes people list their phone number, their email. I'm an email fan. I'm not really, I'm not a phone person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not calling anyone, especially for a podcast, but they'll have their, um, their email address in there. If they have their website, you can go to their contact page. Sometimes they'll have a guest form. Um, if you can't find any of it, then that's when I say it's okay to send a DM and just say, Hey, I was wondering if you're accepting guests, don't give them the full pitch in your message. But, you know, is there an email? I couldn't find it. 
to reach out to you and, and give you more information and then, you know, go from there. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm a big fan of having what I call a pitch kit. It's basically like a media kit where your headshots there, your bio, um, not a full blown bio, but you know, enough to tell them who you are and what you're an expert on your expert talking points, uh, you, and then if you've been in other places, I will list those out, you know, oh, I've been mentioned in thrive. Oh, I've been on this podcast and I hyperlink everything. Mm. One of the big things, my, one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone gives homework to the host, you can't just pitch me with your email and not include your website or where I can find you. If I have to look for you and leave the email, then I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, so I don't expect another host to do so. So ensuring that all of that information is there, uh, make sure that in your pitch email, it's concise, but it showcases what you are going to give to the host. It's not about you, even though it is about you because you want to be the guest. It's what are you going to bring to the audience? What are you going to bring to the host that they can't do on their own? So to be sure to include those, I like bullet points, nothing too long and, you know, make it unique. Let them know that you've listened to them. You followed them, connect with them on some other level other than you have a podcast and I want to be a guest. Mm -hmm. So every podcast that I pitch to, I listen to just like every media outlet that I pitch to, I've engaged with them on some level, whether it's on Twitter, I've read, you know, their articles and to reference that to make that connection because it will make you stand out versus, Hey, you've got a podcast and in the description, it says you do this. Well, that's great. Cause I can talk about this. It's, yeah. it's just not authentic. It, it, it's interesting because, um, <clears throat> and, and there are like groups out there for being a guest, find a guest, which is how we got connected. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, I've been very lucky, but I have to do a lot of legwork to make sure that the guest is really going to be lined up with what, well, first that they have enough information out there so that I'm not like, if you don't have a website, then it's kind of, you know, you're going to be on my podcast, but people can't even find you. So, you know, I right. feel like there needs to be, uh, you know, enough substance and then, it, you know, it needs to be aligned with the topic that, you know, I've been very lucky that I've only had maybe one or two interviews that I haven't published just because not because they were bad, but just because I afterwards I was like, this just isn't really my audience. This isn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. And I'm really particular about what I put out. I'm not just going to interview anyone. I want every episode to be really engaging, inspirational. I want people to come away with something like big and to feel like touched and to be excited for the next person that they're going to meet. So I'm the uh, same way there. I had one interview where I walked away and I went, eh, I don't know. And I put it off and she ended up reaching out to me and she goes, I didn't feel that was my best interview. Could we redo it? And I went, oh yes, because I didn't feel it either. And then there was one other one that I just didn't do at all. Um, because later on some Instagram stuff came out that I went, oh, our values do not align. So your interview yeah. will not be airing at all. Um, but you mentioned the Facebook group uh, in which you can find, you know, you can find guests, you can find podcasts to be a guest on. And that's more a reactive type of pitch, you know, where you see somebody who's putting it out there that, hey, I want to do this versus a proactive pitch of you actually doing the research and going out and searching for the podcasts that are a right fit. Because I think often the groups, at least that I'm in on Facebook and I get some email ones too, it's just a blanket. I'm going to put it out there. You know, I need some guests and you get everyone and it's not a good fit. And as a host, I wouldn't, I, I commend you for doing it because you did it. And I was like, oh, I'll help you. But it can be scary to think of what who's going to just throw their name out there and they have absolutely no relevance to your, your podcast at all. So mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the proactive approach versus the reactive. For sure. For sure. I think, um, yeah, it's interesting. That's really interesting. I, I also think that as a podcast, um, host, um, it's, it's really important to know your audience and know your values and know yourself and have a really strong understanding of what you want your show to be. Because 
if you don't, um, people will try to kind of hijack it for their own purposes because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, they have this platform that's free. You're doing all the work and they get to do it. So, um, so I think I've, like I said, I've been very lucky um, and I've done a fair amount of vetting. Um, but I have had people, you know, who wanted to change how I did in my things. It was like, well, I need you to send me every question you're going to ask. I need to pre-prepare. I need to, so I'm like, well, I don't do that. I literally want to just have a conversation with someone really interesting and learn something and share like mm -hmm. that, you know, and if we can't do that, then that's not my style. Like I just, I don't want canned responses. Um, yeah. and I never know where the conversation's going to go. Like, like, I mean, I, have, I, I love that. I think yeah, that's the best. Yeah. I have ideas. I have definitely bullet points where, I mean, we're going to keep, we're circling back to the podcast tour. We're doing this, but I love going down the detours too, because you get really interesting stories and things that you wouldn't otherwise. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So let's go back to the podcast tour then. Right. Yes, um, yes. so let's talk about if you're going to launch, you're launching your book and so you're done February. Let's say that you're going to be ready to launch. Hang on. So, so like, yeah, this is a really good, so yeah, for instance, like, let's say my, I'm hoping to publish by July, my publish mm -hmm. date, maybe. I don't know if that's real, but let's hope. Let's just say that's going to happen. So what are my steps between now and July and how do I set that up? So you, you're going to research what, who it is you're trying to talk to your ideal reader. Um, you can start researching your podcasts. I would also recommend by before then, you'll be able to have your hands on, you know, the the book that the public's the, not allowed to see. The arts, I've recently yeah. gotten, yeah, yeah, I've recently gotten my hands on some for the first time. I've never been privy to a book before it was published, and all the warnings on every page and the table of contents. I'll say page zero. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I get a high off of that. I love. I'm a book reader, so to be yeah. able to have that in my hands, I'm like. This is awesome. Um, so have that ready, you know, even in a digital format and start pitching yourself and really that you want them to be a part of your launch. You want them to have access to your book. You want them to read it. And then you'd love to come on and share, you know, with their audience what it was about to get their feedback. Um, I've done, I've hosted and I've been a part of launches for part of yeah book launches for tours in which we're having all of these episodes launch go live on launch day hmm. so i did um kara golden was one she's the founder of hint water okay so i got they sent the book they actually sent hint water too uh and then we recorded and then i just made sure that it could go live on the day that her book was launching and it was amazing to see all of these episodes going live. They were all interviews with her oh. all over the place. It was really incredible. Um, I've got another one coming up where I've interviewed the author. Um, hers is next week at Tiffany Bloom and her book's not out yet, but we talk about it. And so it, it'll coincide. She wanted it to go a little earlier. And then I've got another author the, the next month that it'll go live on her launch day as well. Oh, so that's wow. a way that you can have it when we can't be in person for these book launches and to celebrate, but for you to appear to be everywhere on the day that your book launches. Oh, that's so smart because if, yeah, if you can coordinate it with the podcast host, um, then yeah, you can be a million places at once. It's like a live but it's all pre-recorded, so yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be the day of, you know, it can be the week of your launch uh, because not everybody launches on to, I'm a Tuesday person, but you know, some will come on Wednesday or Friday. And so to have an entire week of where you are everywhere, and really that's the week that you get to relax and celebrate because it's already done, the work is all there. Yes. Uh, but you've, you've done that foundation and laid it and now, your book is live, you know, whether you want to then also include a giveaway for the book or something, you know, you can do all of these types of things that go along with it, have a Facebook group, uh, you know, bring a bunch of podcasters together. And instead of having a Facebook group, that's for people to read your book and then leave reviews later, you know, have, um, a whole launch group. That's just podcast hosts mm. and, you know, make it around that. That's another idea that you could do. But really just engaging the host and you know, give them access to that book. Like, look how giddy I am to get access to a book before it's published. Other people will be the same way. 
yeah. because it's something cool that not everyone else gets. And if only I could like send a book with a bottle of wine to everyone. I mean, I would have everyone wanting. <laughs> yes. Or just a mini bottle. Right. If it weren't illegal. Okay. Well, I got to work on this. <laughs> I'll find a distributor. There are places that ship. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, if you don't like my book, just drink the wine. <laughs> <laughs> drink the wine as you read. It'll get better. <laughs> definitely. Most definitely. Oh, that's so interesting. What is your cadence? So you would have a big launch. You'd have a buildup for the launch. And then would you just kind of over the next like six months or so try to like sprinkle uh, other podcasts, other media? Yeah, to or? me, it's an ongoing thing. You know, my clients don't just sign up for a one and done. We all have contracts that are three months long, six months long, and it's a continuous pitch because th there's over a million podcasts out there. So you can continue pitching all the time. Uh, whether your book is just now going live or it's already gone live, you know, is there a theme around it? So we're still talking about wine. So let's talk about crush season. You know, that's going to be more towards the fall. So you could come back again, you know, around crush season because that's something that's happening. It's relevant and tie it in somehow like that, you know, Valentine's day will then be coming up after crush. So it's a romance novel. Romance, exactly. So, you know, to, to bring it in and just look ahead at different things that are happening that you could tie it into as well. Uh, it, it's always going to be relevant. That's so cool. And so you do this for you, um, through your collective separately from your podcast, you mm -hmm. have you have clients you do this do. professionally um and so if people want to get information about hiring you to do uh to do their pr <laughs> i do i do pr traditional pr and podcast pitching and you can do the combination of both or you can just do podcast pitching all on its own and so it's just that we're getting you on podcast yes and that's all through the mslcollective.com msl stands for my simplified life so. Okay, good, good. And um, I'll be sharing all the links to that with everyone. Um, Thank you. And are your rates on there? Or is they that are. Some... Okay, they are under okay, services. Okay. Yeah, they're standard. Okay, okay. very cool. Ah, hmm, interesting. Yeah, we need to talk. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> We should have been drinking wine during this. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm really sorry. I mean, I could I could <laughs> still get some. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, what other advice, I guess, would you have um, regarding podcast tours or really just any book? Like what other things kind of come to mind if someone is like, like me or anyone else who's like already published or is publishing in a year that's still COVID lockdown? Pitch yourself. Pitch yourself and don't be afraid to follow up. Don't follow up the same day. Don't follow up the same week. Give it some time. Don't be pesky. You know, it's just like in business when you're cold calling for sales, you know, you put it out there, give them some time to mull it over, but then follow up in a few weeks. I'm just checking in, you know, did you get this? And oftentimes, I don't know if it's because so many hosts have daytime jobs as well, but it's the second or third follow-up that I get, oh, I'm so glad you got lost in the email. I meant to get back to you. Yes. And although you might not get the yes right away, it might be on the second or third follow-up. So don't be afraid to follow up. Don't give up. Um, and, you know, go for a mixture of the big and the small podcasts. It's, it's not about the numbers, but don't be afraid to put yourself out there. If you feel you're a good fit, you know, let them know why. It's, it's your time to shine and you never know who's going to say yes and have you on. And one other thing I want to mention is when you get that interview, be sure to share it share it on your social media, please. Mm -hmm. You know, you've gotten the favor of being interviewed. So return it by sharing that and not just for 24 hours in your story. If it doesn't fit, you know, your feed, the look and the feel and the aesthetic, then make it a carousel. So you have something that's your own in front and they have to swipe and they can see the podcast graphic behind it. Don't forget that helps with your algorithm too. So it's like a double whammy, but, you know, share it, tag the person, tag the host, just be kind and grateful for what you get out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah, 
Yes, please, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> and yes, rate and listeners. review the podcast too. Yes, yes. That's I've a re- big one. Everyone forgets to rate and review. Ah. It's also not so easy to access and do. Like I have to say, like even Apple, it makes it kind of complicated. I'm also kind they of do. irritated that not all of the show notes show up all the time on Apple. Like <laughs> they have glitches all the time. I don't I don't know what yeah. it is. Like sometimes anyway. my computer will automatically play them and I'm like, no, no, I just wanted to go look at what right? they do. <laughs> yeah. I just want to read more. I want to know more yeah. about this guest before I invest my thirty minutes or forty five or hour or whatever it is. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. Um, so how many are you seeing this? Um, obviously, you are now and you're part of this more. You're presenting more authors through these podcast tours. Mm-hmm. Um, is this something like, would this be something you do? Like, you know, when you're like a musician, and you go on tour, you have like a page that says, you know, you're going to be in this, this, this place at this time and this place at this time. Is that something you would actually have a schedule for? Or are you, you know, not a, not a schedule because there's really no you rhyme or reason, you know? Yeah. yeah you, you never, never know. know when they're going to publish. That's true. Yeah. But I would definitely promote it on my website once it's been published. If you go to my website, you will see everywhere that I have been, uh, what the topic was, what the podcast was, and then a link straight to it. Um, it gives you authority as the person who's been interviewed, but then it also gives that extra plug to the podcast or whatever outlet it is. Yeah, that's a good point. I need to add a couple on onto my website that I've forgotten. I need to add one this week. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about that earlier today. Also, another thought I had was like, do um, authors ever read parts of their book? or give sure. listeners like a glimpse into a scene or something to get people wondering like you know it's one thing to be like i have a great cover and i have a great title and i'm yeah. telling you it's about wine but to like... read part of it but you know one of the great things is if the host has already read it too and mm. they bring out some of it uh you know i've done that and with the books that i've read and it's funny to see the author light up like oh, you did read my book? That's so wonderful. And, you know, sometimes I'll have notes of like, oh yeah, I want to talk to you about this one. Uh, There was a book I finished over the weekend and I have an interview with her next week, but I was so excited that I had to send her an email about everything in the book that I was so excited about. I'm like, we might talk about it. We might not because some's personal, but this is really good. You know, this is, I read it. And I think to have that extra person, that outside person who's already read it and can pull parts of it and say, you know, this was really great. You know, some might read. Yeah. It just depends on what the host is up for. Also, I mean, was that a book that you got on your own or did they provide you with it? Did they send it to you? Sometimes it's a mix. Um, I had actually, I saw she had a book coming out and I asked her to be on the show and said, I want to read it. Um, She had a separate book launch team. So I just joined up in that too. Um, it, some will give you the book. Some will just then make you part of the launch team. You might have to pre-order the book. Um, but then and you usually get something around that as well as part and, of the launch team. And I guess you could do that. Like if you have it, an electronic version, you could mm-hmm. distribute that to people. I'm just trying to figure out because you only get so many arcs. So, you know, it's like you can't. And I've gotten send. both. I've gotten an arc, as you said, Um, I've gotten the advanced digital copies, um, some where it was like a direct download where I could do it on my Kindle, others were a PDF version of it. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. Just, you know, as long as you can provide something yeah, yeah, ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. This is giving me a lot of food for thought. That's awesome. I'm excited for you. Yes. That's yes. amazing. Oh, uh, me too. I can't wait. I'm already, <laughs> it's it's a sequel or a series and I'm already wanting to write the next book, but I need to wait. I, I need to edit this one first so, or, you know, deal with the edits yeah. when they come back. So I'm like, okay, let me make sure my characters are really going in the direction I think they're going and then, uh, and then I'll continue on. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I will definitely follow up with you. Um, yes, please. And also, otherwise, I might follow up with you anyway for um, some pointers and like, yeah. And yeah. And, yeah cause, and see, uh, this is what comes out of podcasting. Mm-hmm. The relationships and the future collaborations all from, you know, we were strangers here 45 minutes ago. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's what... 
that's what I love about it. Um, you know, and it's funny because people, uh, before everything happened and everything was virtual, um, you know, people weren't using zoom. No one really, you know, it was, I, I use it for work, but mm -hmm. so I'm used to talking to people all the time and like having conversations and like, you know, this is great. But, um, it wasn't really a good tool for connection until now. And now I feel like everyone's understanding my world. I'm like, you can, you can, you can connect with people, even if you're not like right next to each other, or even in the same state, you can, yeah, you can still connect and drink wine or. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's just a great way to meet people that you wouldn't otherwise, you know, I, yes. I've met incredible women that, I'm like, pinch me that I get to actually talk to you. And, you know, now we talk on a regular basis, or if I need something or you need something, you know, we reach out and we'll do whatever it takes or to make those future connections, you know, as well of, oh, I was on this show and this person would be great. And let me introduce you both. So I, that, that's the beauty of podcasts, I think. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely happened for me um, where uh, uh, different guests are like, they know each other and they've like shared and like, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. So um, I'm grateful to be part of this community and that, you know, I'm still growing and learning and, uh, and getting to meet people like you. So this, this is awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, I will definitely um, share your links, how people can find you. But again, um, I'll just speak it out. It's My Simplified Life is the podcast. Yes. Um, go ahead. And the, the MSLcollective.com is my website. And you can find me on Instagram at Michelle Glogovac. Awesome. And do you do Facebook or just Instagram? I, yep. Facebook, the MSL Collective. I'm on Twitter. That, that's Mick Glogovac. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm everywhere. And I'm on Clubhouse now too. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if everywhere. I'll get there. We'll see. Someone has to invite me. <laughs> I have some extra invites if, if you need to afterwards. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been really, really helpful. Um, I know I should have more questions and I feel like as I go a little bit further into the process of figuring out how to do a podcast tour myself, um, I will have more questions for you in the future. But um, but hopefully this gives people uh, enough of a sense of like what to do, how to start, where to go, where some resources and like it's exciting. It's a brave new world. I mean, it used to be blogs, right? People did blog yeah. tours. And so this is so much better. You get to talk and like, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know what? I forgot to mention, I've had on my website, there's some free resources on like how to be a great guest on podcasts. Um, I think I have something on how to pitch yourself, like just some key th things that you should think of. So there's free stuff on the website to just go look for them under free resources and, and you'll find some good ones. Great. That is awesome. Well, thank you, Michelle, so much. Thank you. This was fun. Flipping dreams. This is great. Thank you for listening to Flipping Dreams. Please be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Flipping Dreams or at Heather Renee May. And please check out our website and sign up for our email list where you will get notifications on our weekly podcast and blog posts, as well as our monthly newsletter, and much more. Be the first to know. Sign up today. Thank you again, and we will see you next week here on Flipping Dreams. <laughs>